Have you ever gotten stuck trying to figure out where your database related performance issues are coming from? Look no further than the database tool in Visual Studio and find out more on this episode of VS Toolbox. Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and today I'm joined once again by Esteban Herrera as part of our larger series on performance profiling. And today we'll be talking about the database tool. So hey, how are you doing, Esteban? I'm doing great, happy to be here. Long time no see. Yeah. So the database tool, has that been around for a while or is that one of the newer profiling tools? It's relatively new. Uh, at this point, it's been around for several months, if not a year. Um, but we're still actively doing work on it to make it even better. So awesome. I'm, I'm excited to show it off a little bit today. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. So what exactly is it? Uh, so it's another one of those tools that we see when you enter the performance profiling uh, menu which again, you can reach that by hitting Alt F2 or going to debug in the performance profiler. Uh, and what it does is it captures more data about your program as it runs. In this mm -hmm. case, it, it captures uh, database activity, queries, transactions, stuff like that. That's uh, great. And when you run it alongside the CPU usage tool, uh, it can be a powerful way of narrowing down uh, pieces of your code that might be generating a lot of work for a database or might be waiting on a data database and hopefully you can tweak them to make your application a little bit faster. That's excellent. So which what kinds of databases is this tool applicable to? So like SQL, um, entity framework? Yeah, entity framework, uh, anything that falls under the ADO.net uh, family. Uh, in this case, I believe I'm using uh, MySQL database with entity framework, but uh, any uh, any entity framework or ADO dot, uh, database uh, should work with this tool. Cool. So what kind of query are we going to be profiling today? Yeah, so today I have a pretty simple um, demo for you. Um, this application is one I wrote a while back that it just takes, um, it keeps track of a movie collection and you can add movies, edit movies, et cetera. So I'm just gonna launch this application. Uh, if I click on this link, we'll see a list of movies. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was actually for a video store because there's prices, but I can- Wow, go. those are some cheap prices. I'm paying like $4 to rent things on Apple <laughs> Store these days. <laughs> yeah, maybe these are blockbuster days. Yeah, oh, good times. Um, so I can delete a movie. Um, so on delete a so die forth. hard? Why would you do that? <laughs> oh, I, I already have three copies. It's just for uh, on the list. Okay. <laughs> uh, and once once I've driven my application a little bit and created some of the activity that I might care about, I can go back to Visual Studio and stop collection. And it's going to um, massage all that data that we collected into mm -hmm. this view. So from the CPU summary page that we see, because we ran the CPU usage tool alongside it, um, you'll see the same things that you would expect, this categories graph, this top functions and hot path, but you'll also see these graphs at the top. Uh, and again, these graphs can help you filter the, whatever tools you ran to just that time span. So if there was a ton of CPU activity or a ton of database queries during a certain time, uh, in order to narrow down that data and not be overwhelmed, if it's a ton of data, you might want to filter there. Um, Makes sense. But the database tool, what it really gives you is this uh, table that you see here and under these queries graph. Um, and it tells you a bunch of really useful things. It tells you the actual query that happened. Um, so, so select from where um, the, the whole query is there. It tells you what time it started and what and how long it lasted. These unknowns uh, in this case are there because the query uh, didn't end in time. Like it, I stopped collecting before it ended, so we don't know how long the query lasted. Um, but if I had let it run a little bit longer, all of these would have a duration as well. Mm -hmm. um, this is the number of records that were affected or returned. 
Uh, so if it's a select, I might uh, I might get two returns, or if I deleted a movie, uh, it might be one record affected, uh, so on and so forth. Um, you have this database column, which um, if your application is calling several databases, maybe one is holding uh, movie posters or covers, uh, that might be useful as well. The actual connection string that's used to connect to that database. Um, and these can all be sorted. And so between the graph, this table of queries, how long each one lasted, uh, and even what database it happened in, um, you should be able to identify a query, a query that might be worth taking a closer look at. And when you right click on it and click go to source file, we'll try to take you to where in your code that query actually happened. And it cool. looks like in this case, that query data. had to do with actually seeding the database at startup. Makes sense. That's uh, a long process. It, it can be. Or, yeah, um, it can be. So, but that's a really powerful thing that I don't want to understate. The fact that mm -hmm. you can go from one of your queries to your source and see what uh, what part of your code was responsible for that query yeah. uh, makes it really easy to go exactly where you need to mm -hmm. to hopefully make some changes that can make your application more performant. That's great. So let's say that you might have written the query in the database in a way that makes it uh, have a heavier performance by default and you want to like make it better. Can you, from the database tool, window, can you get redirected to the database itself? Is that possible? Um, not directly to the database itself. Um, most of the changes that we can make from within Visual Studio have to do with the way that our client interacts with the database. Um, but it can still point you to a, maybe a table that needs to be re-indexed or mm -hmm. a transaction that uh, can be tweaked a little bit that sure. can be taken care of on whatever database management tool you're using. Um, so it, it can't take you directly to changes on your database, but it can point you to a specific transaction that performed differently than you expected and can hopefully take you to a possible change faster than if you were just guessing or going down a list of everything that happened during that time. That's great. So are there any other like roadblocks that people should be aware of when they use this tool? Um, other than um, being aware that if you get an unknown in one of these uh, columns, it's because the query didn't complete in time. Uh, okay. It's a pretty straightforward tool. I mean, like yeah. I've mentioned a few times now, this performance investigations are usually about just getting to your the place in your code where you can make a change as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and so this tool is purposely uh, tries to give you as much useful information as possible uh, and then make it really easy to go to your source and be able to make a change there. Uh, a lot of the power that comes with this tool is that you can run it alongside the CPU usage tool or several other tools. And so a lot of uh, another thing that might be interesting to look at is if you make a database call and uh, especially if you're using energy framework uh, or link, you might be um, allocating objects for like all your returned records and your memory consumption might be different than what you would expect. And this tool alongside a memory tool would hopefully surface that issue. I agree. Um, Super nifty. So since this is a new tool and you directly worked on this one, right? Uh, yes, I did. Um, so I, I talked to dozens and dozens of developers and <laughs> asked about what kind of issues they have with doing investigations with their uh, applications. 
Uh, and the two things that came up often is if something's performing slowly and there's a database involved, they almost always uh, immediately look at the database. So mm -hmm. we knew this was a, a useful place to have a tool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and the other thing they said is just that there's so much data when you collect uh, a trace that it's all about being able to get to your code as quickly as possible. So mm -hmm. that can we be tried to make those, we really made those two things the focus of this tool. Great. You answered my own question. I was just going to ask, what was the hardest part <laughs> about putting it together and stuff? So yeah, folks, just know that we do listen to your concerns. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I would love to hear more uh, feedback about how to make this tool even more useful. So my contact information will be in the description. Please go ahead and try the tool. And if you run into any issues, just send me an email or tweet me or anything. And uh, yep. I'll get in touch. Awesome. And to learn more about the database tools specifically, is there a resource for that or like a doc? Yeah, there is a doc in the Visual Studio docs. We'll make sure that's linked as well. Um, we actually recently uh, made some updates to that doc, so it should be very complete. Um, and between that and just trying it and reaching out, we will hopefully be able to help you diagnose any database issues that your application might have. Sounds great. Well, hopefully the next time people are stuck with their database related performance issues, it won't be a problem anymore with the new, new database tool. So thanks for being here, Esteban. Yeah, it was a quick one today, but I'm, I'm very proud of this yeah. tool and I hope it's useful to everyone. Yep, short, sweet, and to the point. And yeah, until next time, happy profiling. Happy profiling.